And good morning. Good morning. And welcome on this Trinity Sunday. And welcome to those who are worshiping with us online today. Good to have you with us. And our service today begins on page 355. Page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and blessed, blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Our first lesson is the story of creation. As this ancient narrative opens, the spirit of the Lord hovers like a great mother bird over the shapeless world. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, 
and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And so it was. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth. And the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seeds, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forward vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God sent them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was the evening and the morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth in the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply the waters in these seas, and let the birds multiply on earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps around the earth, upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given green, plant for food, and it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the, their multitude, and on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth 
when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Using your bulletin, please join me in reading Psalm 8 responsibly. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children. Your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set upon a stronghold against your adversaries. To dwell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars and the set in your horses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? The son of man is the You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have adorned him with glory and honor. You have given him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and, and whatever ever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how, how exalted is your name in all the world. In this passage, Paul closes his painful letter to the Corinthians in final admonitions and words of peace and love. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of Lord the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to the eleven, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go there and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the ages. Well, today is Trinity Sunday. It is the day in the church year when we ponder the mystery of the triune God. How God is three in one and one in three. It is the only Sunday in the year where we focus upon a doctrine as opposed to more of a teaching. Today we enter the divine dance, a dance that pulls us inside the circle of love that is our triune God. This is the metaphor that is used by Father Richard Rohr to interpret the Holy Trinity in his new book, or book, The Divine Dance, The Trinity and Your Transformation. He writes that in the past, Quote, in our attempts to explain the Trinitarian mystery, we overemphasized the individual qualities of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but not so much the relationships between them. That is where all the power is. That is where all the meaning is, he writes, end quote. Please note that the word relationship in this divine dance, an image in this divine dance, and imagine, imagine the traditional folk dances of the Middle East, where you see everyone holding hands or hands locked together, dancing around in circles, together. If this doctrine of the Trinity seems too hard to understand, then perhaps the point The Blind Men and the Elephant by John Godfrey Sachs will explain why. This poem concerns six blind men who decide to satisfy their curiosities as to what an elephant is like. Upon arriving where the elephant was, each man approached the elephant from a different stance. The first man, as he encountered the side of the elephant, said the elephant was like a wall. The second, as he felt the tusk, said the elephant was like a spear. The third, taking the squirming trunk in his hands, offered the opinion that the elephant was like a snake. The fourth, touching the elephant's knee, said it was like a tree. The fifth, Feeling the elephant's ears said he was like a big fan. And the sixth, grasping the tail, encountered with encountered the thought that the elephant was more like a rope. 
The sad thing about the six men in this poem was that even though they thought they were right, they were completely mistaken. What was even more tragic was that despite their blindness, they could have gained a visual impression of an elephant by simply listening to someone with normal eyesight who had actually beheld the animal. Relating this story to our understanding of God, we humans, we are blind in our perception of God. And we therefore need the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom John writes, quote, No one has ever seen God, the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known. Further, he sta John states in the words of Philip to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we shall be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you do not know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Martin Luther once said, quote, God is nothing but burning love and a glowing oven full of love. End quote. And if God is love, then God cannot exist in isolation. Think about it. To love is to be in relationship. And to love perfectly is to be in eternal relationship. If God is perfect love, then God must be social. God is not some simple, solitary, isolated, individual being. God is personal. And God is personal in the sense that God is the love that creates, redeems, and sustains everything that exists. The life of God is like a divine dance of persons in love from which sparks fly. The love that moves the sun and the other stars. At the heart of the universe is the divine dance of persons in love. And if God is the love that creates and reconciles and transforms all that exists, then God must be in relationship in God's essence. essence. So when we say that God is Trinity, it is a way of saying that God is love. Nothing but burning love and a glowing oven full of love, a love that overflows into all creation. Here is how Augustine explained it. We begin with the Father. The Father is eternal with a burning desire to love. The Father cannot help himself. He is so full of love. Yet in eternity, what does he have to love? Consequently, God posited himself against as another, as an object of his love. He posited himself again as the Son. Therefore, in eternity, forever and ever, God the Father has had someone to love. He had the Son. In Jesus' high priestly prayer, which we heard several weeks ago, we were reminded that everything that the Son has is from the Father. Likewise, all that the Son has, he gives back to the Father. The Father is love, overwhelming love. All that he has, the Son has. Consequently, the Son is likewise love. Majestic, overwhelming love. He loves the Father back, and according to Augustine, the Holy Spirit is the love that binds them together. The Father loves the Son, and the Spirit is the love that makes them one. That is the Trinity. 
Another image of this divine dance comes from St. Bonaventure, and that is the image of a water wheel. The wheel carrying three buckets, and it, as it goes around, it fills and empties, fills and empties, fills and empties into eternity. There is the constant emptying of God's self and the constant filling up world without end. Now, if God is social, then we are social as well. If we are created in the image and likeness of the triune God, then we are also created to be in loving relationships. And yet we find that this runs counter to the pervasive individualism of our culture. Whether or not we are still living in the me generation, many folks have noted that the rampant individualism of our society is one of the greatest problems facing us today. In his book, God is Public, Mark Toulouse writes, personal success and consumption have become the primary ends of American life. Even religion has become a competitive item for sale. The pursuit of private gain has become the great American sport in all walks of life. And this is bad. It is bad not only for society, but it is also bad for people themselves. The loneliness and isolation and despair that are so prevalent in our society stem from this view of people as isolated individual selves. But the doctrine of the Trinity tells us a different story. It tells us that we are created for loving relationships. We are hardwired for relationships of mutual fellowship and love. In the Harvard Business Review in 2009, Roderick Kramer wrote, quote, within one hour of birth, a human infant will draw her head back to look into the eyes and face of the person gazing at her. Within a few more hours, the infant will orient her head in the direction of her mother's voice. And unbelievable as it may seem, it's only a matter of hours before the infant can actually mimic a caretaker's expressions. A baby's mother in turn responds and mimics her child's expressions and emotions within seconds. In short, we're social beings from the get-go. We're born to be engaged and to engage others." End quote. Now this shouldn't be all that surprising if God is love. The triune God is nothing but burning love and a glowing oven full of love. That love has created us, has redeemed us, and it sustains us. Our life, our breath, our very existence is a gift. When we enter into loving relationships, we not only find our truest and deepest selves, but we also find God, because we are created in the image of the triune God. God is social, and so are we. The divine life is a dance party. When we join the dance, when we enter into loving relationships, then we participate in the very life of the triune God in whom we live and move and have our being. We are created to participate in God's love and we are created to share that love then with others. If God is love, then the purpose of human life is to participate in that love and to share that love. That is why when Jesus was asked about the greatest commandment, he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. This may be the key to the universe. God is love. Participate in that love. Share that love. These insights that come from thinking about the Trinity could really transform how we think about God and ourselves and our place here in this world. The Trinity is a way of saying that 
the costly love, that vulnerable love, that suffering love that we know in Jesus Christ, that love that continues in the new life given to us in the Spirit is who God most truly, most fully is. God is Emmanuel, God with us, the God who suffers with us and for us, not hanging out in some far off corner of the universe, watching all of the pain and sorrow of this world, but rather hanging on a cross for us and for our salvation. The Trinity at its heart is a way of pointing to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the new life that comes from this and saying that is what God is most truly like. The love that moves the sun and the other stars is the same love that poured itself out for us in the self-giving love of Jesus. God is nothing but burning love and a glowing oven full of love. And if we are created in the image and likeness of God, then we are to find our true selves not in being aloof and alone and apart and above it all, but rather in giving of ourselves away in love, in our vulnerable and suffering hearts, and in all those ways we are with and for one another. God is social and so are we. God is nothing but burning love in a glowing oven full of love. We are created to participate in and share that love. We share in the love of the triune God, a love that makes one out of many. Amen. Standing, let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us is our heart of salvation, came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have an no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are found in your bulletin. Let us offer our prayers in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, responding to each petition. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Creator of the universe and all that dwells in the seas and skies and all creatures who inhabit the earth, help us to guard your holy treasures and to delight in all that you have made. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Word of truth, open our hearts to receive your message as it is revealed through the Holy Scripture, the witness of your church, and in the minds and hearts of your faithful. 
Let us pray. Hear Hear us, blessed Trinity. Spirit of life, strengthen us to reveal the fruits of thy kingdom through the actions of our daily lives. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Architect of all that is seen and unseen, may we rebuild the world in peace and give to each other the good gifts which you have formed in creation. Let us pray. Hear Hear us, blessed Trinity. Incarnate One, help us to offer your grace throughout the world, bringing people of every language, nation, and tribe into the baptismal waters of your saving love. Let us pray. Hear Hear us, blessed Trinity. Trinity. Wisdom from on high, descend upon your faithful people that our voices and actions may echo your hope for humanity. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. Gathered on this holy Sabbath, day of rest and praise, joy and worship, we continue our prayers. We pray for healing strength and comfort for those on our prayer list and for those suffering from pain of grief and loss brought about by the senseless violence and the war in the world. Let us pray. Hear Hear us, us, blessed Trinity. Trinity. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, Gail, our assistant bishop, and for all who serve God in his church. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and parishioners of all souls, Mechanicsville, Holy Comforter, Vienna, and Trinity, Arlington. Let us pray. Hear Hear us, blessed Trinity. Trinity. We remember all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Vicki Lipscomb, in whose memory the altar flowers have been given. Let us pray. Hear us, blessed Trinity. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace.
Good morning once again, and again, welcome to those who are with us online. It's good to have you. Um, please join us if you have the opportunity and time to, for refreshments over in the parish hall. Um, remember that there is the Wednesday Eucharist in the chapel at 9.30 each week. Um, and at 8 o'clock I was reminded that looking way down the road to the end of July is our ice cream social that is going to be here and that will also include a cakewalk. So um, that's, there's postings about that on the bulletin board, I believe, at this point in time. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be made? Yes. And um, there will be a men's brotherhood breakfast next Sunday at 9 o'clock. Uh, we'll be discussing the future of the men's brotherhood and uh, some events that we plan for the fall. So we will be sending out an email to all men of the church, and everyone is invited to attend. Okay. Thank you very much. Let us walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. We continue with Eucharistic prayer C. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and mortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. 
again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim within your glory in their unending hymn. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took a cup of wine gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has, has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Jesus Christ is the everlasting life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Christ the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus, Lord Lord Jesus Christ, Christ keep you in everlasting life. life. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Lord of Christ, the cup of salvation. Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Amen. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. Salvation. The cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of our Lord, Lord, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. life.
us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and live and reign in perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith, that we may know you in all your ways, and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray together the prayer on page 366. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks.